So first things first, today I would like to talk about uh, quite an interesting uh, stuff because it will be the red dragon and the whole the biblical scarecrow that uh, Christianity picked up from St. John of Apocalypse and that continues to this day. Now first things first, um, I would like to establish what is this omnipresent evil and malignant number 666 uh, doing and how did it come into being. Now the provenance of this number is uh, Mithraic and uh, according to the square found in Pompeii of Sator Arepo, Tenet, Opera, Rotas and so on. Uh, this is a Mithraic square that you can derive certain numbers from and the 666 is a solar number symbolizing the sun in as much as in Mithraic order 777 is the Saturnian number because Saturn was considered in the Mithraic order after the Sun. It is of course not an astronomical order per se, but an initiatory number. Now, uh, yes, from this particular uh, square we may derive Alpha and Omega, Sol Invictus, Saturnus, Ion, Mitra and so on. The following numbers are also to be derived from it. But I would like to mention what is this thing about the cross. Now the cross is antedating and predating Christianity, the Egyptian crux and Zata symbolizing the tree of life, Ank, the hieroglyph of life. Uh, we have the crux kamata or the swastika, which was uh, for example incised on the Mithraic uh, initiate's forehead as uh, also an Assyrian symbol. Uh, we have the crux capitata, which is de facto later used by the uh, Christians to symbolize crucifixions that never happened, because Jesus was stoned to death at the place called Lydda, and the crux quadrata, which is a metallic symbol done on the uh, forehead, and was later branded as the mark of the beast by naughty Christians. Now, what do we have here? On the, uh, first of all, the uh, key or the X didn't mean Christos, it originally meant Kronos, which is quite important because Kronos was also related to the Mithraic Ion Zurvanic cycle. Uh, now, the graffito in Pompeii says Pater Noster Sautrane Vale, Rotas Operatunet Arepo Sator Ano Sautrane Vale, which means I salute you, Saturn, Pater Noster, Saturnus Cronus, the seventh Mithraic rank in which, uh, for example, Marcus Aurelius was uh, placed, was the Saturnus Cronus rank. Now, uh, what do we have here? Apart from that, it symbolizes Saturnus Cronus, Chronum Seculum Ion and Zerva Nacarana, which was basically both the Sun and Saturn in a time cycle of the Ionic cycles. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, Marcus Aurelius was of the house of Ozel, which means the Aurelian house, and he was called the Beast of God. The Beast Terion, Aurelian Terion, or the Little Beastie, uh, was the um, title of uh, emperors, Roman emperors, up to a certain point. Now, uh, what I would like to derived from it is that Marcus Aurelius was also an initiate into the Dracon Mysteries, into the Dracaina Mysteries that stand from the East. And here we've got another article by Jaco Aron and the Dragon Cults that were destroyed by Christianity. Uh, Nymphe Dracaina were the initiates, the female initiates of this cult, and rarely ever males were initiates in this cult. Now, what do we have here? That was the, what do we have? The Mysteries of Glycon, that was a different story. However, uh, it was uh, a very important thing when Constantine wanted to Christianize uh, the Dracontes and the Artemis Dracaina or Hecate Dracaina that was the chief goddess of this cult they were trying to find a, oh, there we go, Hecate uh, that uh, they tried to find a wife for Jesus because Jesus didn't have a wife so uh, in his paper Levo has found one passage from John Chrysostom 
where Artemis is characterized as Drakaina and Ecclesia, the Christian Church, as Nympha, the Bride of Christ. The Church as Bride is a very common image in Christian thought. But why is it linked with Artemis, Drakaina? Because they try to marry Jesus to that poor Artemis, and when her priests and her people rejected such a marriage as complete nonsense, uh, John of Apocalypse started destroying her temples and drowning her priests and priestesses. And uh, eventually they married Jesus to the church because he didn't have a wife, he was a fucking loser. Now, uh, what else do we have? Meda Artemis came riding upon dragons, girt with coils of dragons, the great whore. The great whore was Artemis, the seven-headed or the mistress of the seven planets. And the dragon was the master of the seven planets the same as the tree of life this was this master and mistress magistra who won the crowns of the planets to govern earth and to be liberated into the stars very ancient serpent mysteries that are by and large forgotten now uh, what else we have here as a little shortcut i'm trying to uh, shorten this video as i know that the attention span of modern people is very very uh, short and uh, small well uh, so yeah that's a shortcut to history and uh, a bunch of christian lies religion the making uh, that was constant in the religion made by the at uh, the christian uh, council of nicaea uh, by the time of Marcus Aurelius, there were 1 to 2 million Christians in a 120 million empire. Now, uh, the religion of Christianity didn't grow as it is. Uh, it grew by several million, but Constantine made it a major religion and enforced it on the people. It's not because of popularity of this religion, it's more that it was an imperial cult that was enforced upon the people. And since then, Christianity lies and lies and lies. It's a sect of the Jews and spreads uh, their nonsense worldwide. And uh, I'm one of the people who don't even try to stop it, but I'm, I'm trying to reclaim some historical and uh, initiatory truths to contradict the uh, bullshit. Uh, it won't be successful, of course, but trying and siding with gods, healthy gods, is all that I can do. Thank you.